If you're new to North Texas and maybe wondering exactly what is the cap? Well, it's an area of warm air above our heads. Uh, I'm using, you know, the DFW area here in this picture, but it exists all over North Texas. This isn't a unique feature to something that's just over the top of DFW or something like that. It's just I got to have a, a pretty background, and so we're going to put the downtown Dallas background in the graphic here. So we have unstable air trying to uh, rise up from the surface. You know, the warm air that builds up doesn't matter. It's over all of North Texas could be over DFW could be over Greenville. It doesn't matter where that warm air is rising. It rises all over North Texas during the spring, but we have a warm, stable layer of air aloft that acts like a lid and prevents those thunderstorms from forming. Think of it like a lid on the top of a boiling pot of water. But when you remove that lid, all of a sudden all that steam erupts up into your face sometimes. That's not necessarily good, but it erupts out of the, the pot of the boiling pot of water. That's what can happen with thunderstorm development. Here's kind of a video of that occurring. We had a thunderstorm that developed that was able to break the cap in Collin County, but watch these storm clouds or clouds just to the north of Dallas. They kind of hit that cap and don't develop. This was not today. This was from the past, but I found this video here. So those thunderstorms updraft couldn't breach that cap most of the day, but they did in Collin County, and that's why we had that thunderstorm there. So that's why we're on cap watch today. If the cap breaks, we will see a couple thunderstorms here in North Texas, but as of right now, it is holding steady. It's a little bit weaker than what it was earlier today. The potential is still there for it to break. That's why we're going to be watching it very closely over the next couple hours here. We have a dry line setting up to off to the west. That dry line is going to be important for storm chances over the next couple of days. So if that cap breaks, we could see a storm or two or three here in North Texas the remainder of the afternoon into the evening hours. But as we head towards sunset, those storms, I think, will kind of come to a close and weaken and fall apart. So through the late night hours, it's not like we're going to see thunderstorms all night long or something like that. It's really only from now to about 10 o'clock that we could see uh, some thunderstorm chances out there. And if one forms, could have some hail, some very large hail potentially, some of those strong winds, and that tornado threat's not zero, but it's on the low side. I'm much more concerned about if you find yourself underneath one of those thunderstorms with that hail threat. Now, since the coverage is not high at all, most of you absolutely will stay dry the remainder of the evening. I hope all of North Texas stays dry the remainder of the afternoon into the evening. But if you find yourself underneath one of those storms, likely be severe. My main concern is that hail threat. Overnight tonight, clouds roll back into North Texas. We'll start off the morning cloudy tomorrow. Not much happens during the morning to midday hours, but we'll be watching that dry line out to the west. Looks like we will see some thunderstorm development. That cap break across western North Texas, maybe southwestern North Texas, and then some storms move kind of up to the northwest as we head into the evening hours. There's 6 o'clock. 7 o'clock kind of has some storms trying to fizzle out, but I would just say the chances are for kind of a round of storms to kind of move up through most of North Texas as we head through the day tomorrow. The good news is they should be pretty scattered, so even though uh, I think storms are more likely tomorrow, the coverage will not be overly high, maybe 40% across the area, but any of those storms that form have a very good chance of being severe, and my main concern is for that large, potentially very large hail. Wind gusts would be behind that, and then the tornado threat tomorrow, certainly not zero. Uh, it's the lowest of those three concerns, but we could see some isolated tornadoes with any of those storms tomorrow, so we'll be watching that closely. Then on Wednesday, front gets a little closer to us. It pushes that dry line through in the morning. Here's 7 a.m. Could have a few showers or storms kind of go up briefly in the morning, but they'll quickly move off to the east, so by noon, all of North Texas is dry. Thunderstorms move over into East Texas and really blow up over East Texas and over into Louisiana and then they'll be moving out. So that's why the severe threat higher for East Texas over in Arkansas and Louisiana. Pretty low for most of North Texas because those storms, uh, it's only a brief chance in the morning and then everything will be moving out. Find yourself underneath the storm. Unfortunately, you'll probably be dealing with some severe weather and that's, that'll be your highest rain total. So, I mean, it's a tenth quarter of an inch, but really that's just kind of in case you see a little bit of rain. I think most areas uh, will be dry because that storm coverage is not going to be overly high. But if you find yourself underneath the storm, you could end up with a brief round of heavy rain, obviously. If we get any storms the remainder of the day today, they will be ending overnight tonight. Clouds will be on the increase tomorrow, muggy and warm with those storm chances tomorrow afternoon and then into the evening hours. That 20% is for Wednesday morning. That activity will be moving out quickly. I do have some rain chances around for the upcoming Easter weekend. I don't see it being a washout of a weekend, but we could have some passing showers around. Next week is actually looking cooler with highs uh, only in the 70s most of next week, and we could get some morning lows back down in the 40s as well.